All right, so who's up next in Bridgerton? Benedict, Eloise, or Francesca? Let's dive into all the hints from season three to figure that out. But before we get into it, my gentle readers and viewers, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video. Spoiler alert, we're diving into details from both the show and the books, so buckle up. Let's begin with Benedict. When Jess Brownell took charge for season three, she made a bold move by skipping ahead to Colin and Penelope's story, which is from Julia Quinn's fourth book. Looking forward, any Bridgerton sibling whose story hasn't been told could be next, but it seems like the older siblings might be up first, so it's safe to assume it won't be either Hyacinth or Gregory. In the latter part of season three, we witnessed Penelope and Colin finally tying the knot. Fast forward nine months, and they've not only become parents to a baby boy, but have also been busy with their own writing ventures. The closing scenes of season three left us with a strong hint. Benedict Bridgerton, played by Luke Thompson, the artistic soul, seems poised for a major role in the upcoming season. Eloise and Benedict shared a heartfelt farewell before Eloise jetted off to Scotland. She dropped a hint about meeting Benedict again the following year, all thanks to her mom's insistence on her attending her masquerade ball. This event is crucial in Julia Quinn's An Offer from a Gentleman, which focuses on Benedict's journey. It's a whole Cinderella storyline where Benedict falls head over heels for Sophie Beckett at a masquerade, enchanted by her despite her masked mystery. Benedict and his courtship with Sophie Beckett, yet to be cast, are hot contenders for season four's spotlight. Fans have been skeptical ever since the show skipped over his novel's storyline. The signs are pointing to Benedict Bridgerton's journey, unfolding to untangle his own confusion about what lies ahead. One thing he does know, he's destined to reunite with Eloise at their mom's masquerade ball, the very setting where he encounters his true love, Sophie, in Quinn's novels. Benedict's story in An Offer from a Gentleman takes a page from Cinderella, love at first sight at a masquerade ball, a mystery woman disappearing at midnight, leaving Benedict smitten. But unlike Cinderella, Sophie's no ordinary maiden. She's Sophie, the illegitimate daughter of an earl turned ladies maid by her wicked stepmother. Benedict spends two years shying away from marriage, fearing he'll never find someone who stirs his heart like Sophie did. And just when he's had enough of the high life, Sophie reappears. Let's hope the show skips over that whole mistress proposal bit. Our Benedict deserves better. Both TV Benedict and Book Benedict are adrift, trying to find their true selves and love. The series may tweak timelines, but we've seen Benedict avoid marriage, embrace uncertainty, and face hints of weariness by the end of season three. He's also exploring his bisexuality and challenging societal norms in matters of the heart. The stage is set for Benedict's journey, especially with the dynamic between him Tilly and Paul laying the groundwork for the novels. Now, Eloise's season three arc hews closely to her novel's trajectory, which could set the stage for her story in season four. While Philip Crane's in a loveless marriage to protect family honor, their potential romance isn't off the table, blossoming from a long distance correspondence in the books. If season four leans into Benedict's tale, Eloise might find herself on a path of personal growth, reconnecting with Philip through letters while staying with Francesca in Scotland. While she might not be the central romantic figure just yet, season four promises to expand her horizons beyond her initial plans with Penelope. Francesca's life takes a whirlwind turn in season three, as she heads to Scotland with her new husband, John, and his charming cousin, Michaela. Meanwhile, Eloise's unexpected decision to accompany Francesca kicks off her own journey to see the world. Benedict, however, seems left adrift again, 
but change is brewing. Eloise's departure marks a pivotal moment as she breaks free from her Mayfair bubble, spurred by Penelope's transformation and feeling the sting of losing her closest friends to love and marriage. Her choice resonates with her novel counterpart in To Sir Philip, with love, where she breaks out of her spinsterhood shadow, feeling left behind by Penelope and Colin's happiness. Among the eldest Bridgertons, Francesca's got the most going on. Season three sees her marrying John and preparing to settle at his Scottish estate with Michaela in tow, a perfect setup for her upcoming romantic journey. In When He Was Wicked, Francesca's marriage to John is cut short by his sudden death paving the way for her eventual love story with Michael, a.k.a. Michaela, in the series. Personally, I'm stoked for Benedict's storyline. He's always been this intriguing, charming figure, and I can't wait to see 